3D printers aren't exactly the most user-friendly at the best of times, but especially so if you have kids when you consider that they're mechanical devices with no safety stops and essentially a piece of hot metal running around at 200 degrees Celsius. But the Sir Moon V1 Pro from Creality is a different story altogether, featuring a fully enclosed design with lovely acrylic windows. It even has an auto pause feature when the door is opened and a webcam to check on your prints remotely from the app. Is this the beginner friendly 3D printer you've been waiting for? Maybe. Join me, James Bruce, as we take a closer look at the Creality Sir Moon V1 Pro in today's MUO review. So the Sir Moon V1 Pro comes well packaged and there's very little setup to do other than cutting the cable ties that hold the internals all together. Just be careful what it is you're cutting. And the most tedious step is that of peeling the protective plastic off the acrylic that encloses three sides of the printer. Also, don't forget to remove the blob of foam from the internal Z-axis. This bit. It's not entirely obvious that it's a part of the packaging at first, and it was only checking through the manual that I realized, oh wait, that's not a part of the printer. It's not just a bit of foam covering some mechanics. Okay, let's talk about what makes this printer unique. Firstly, it has this fully enclosed design, as you can see, and it's ultra quiet. So for little fingers, this is great. It's very safe, and although it's certainly not silent, uh, what you can hear now is about the sum of it, which means you don't need to care about having it uh, in a specific room in the home. It could pretty much uh, sit anywhere, really. The enclosed design is not only great for safety and noise levels, but it's also good for reliability. Even the slightest variations in temperatures from a gust or a draft can end up warping the plastic, so eliminating uh, those in that way should result in better, more reliable prints, less lifting up off the build plate. Now this completely enclosed design does of course come with some downsides. The whole thing is pretty compact, in fact, uh, at just 40 by 38 by 43 centimeters, not including the pull-out handle on the side where the filament sits. But the print bed itself is significantly smaller than average too, at only 175 millimeters square, by 165 millimeters high. It is, however, a super easy to use magnetic sheet print bed, so you can snap off your model when it's done and it comes right off. I've printed everything on this without any adhesion of any kind, and it's been great. Creality also claims that you can print pretty much out of the box, which I found to be true. There's no leveling required. However, it isn't auto leveling. If you do need to re-level it later, you do so by selecting auto-leveling in the user interface. You then, in fact, have to manually level it. Uh, I've noticed other reviewers have labeled this as auto-leveling. I think Creality has since removed that term from their marketing material, but just to be absolutely clear, it is not an auto-leveling printer. You will have to do that by hand when it comes to a point that you need to do it. But out of the box, you shouldn't have to. As something designed to be user-friendly, I think that lack of actual auto-leveling is a bit of a miss here. Furthermore, the leveling process I found to be completely inconsistent. So basically, you stick a piece of paper in between the print head and the bed, and then you move the Z-axis until you feel a slight scratch on the paper. It's pretty standard stuff here. It's a bit awkward, however, with the confined space and the door, but anyway, what I found was that I would raise it up to say minus one, and all of a sudden it would grip completely. Then lower it back down to say 0.5 until it released, and then I would try again and it would go all the way back up to minus one and not grip at all. And I'm not really sure why, but I do think there's a good reason. Most printers have uh, the Z axis for the print head on a dual drive gantry system, rather than this type of design where the entire print bed uh, moves up and down. Uh, with movements only coming from the drive axis on this side. But that said, I haven't had any adhesions or first layer problems, so while the leveling is unreliable, it doesn't seem to matter. The Sir Moon V1 Pro also uses Creality's own Sprite design of direct drive dual gear and therefore high torque extruder. But it also has a tube feed for the filament. So it's an interesting uh, sort of hybrid design there. Again, I've had no issues with it so far. It's been very smooth to feed and to change filaments, so nothing to complain about there. 
The hot end is capable of reaching up to 250 degrees Celsius, so it should work for PETG and ABS, as well as the more common PLA. Though given the beginner nature of this, you're probably gonna stick with PLA, and that's mainly what I've been testing with. Feeding and retracting the filament is a one button affair where it heats to 240 degrees C, then retracts it a bit or pulls it in, and the rest of the feeding is done by hand. Just push or pull the filament in from the side and down through the tube. It works well. In addition to that, it also supports Wi-Fi, so you can print from your phone or from the Creality Cloud website. The Sirmoon V1 Pro Edition that we have here also has a built-in webcam so you can view your prints remotely through your phone, but bizarrely, I couldn't figure out how to do that through the website. From a hardware perspective, I really like the Creality Sirmoon V1 Pro. It's sleek, it's friendly looking, the touch screen is really simple, and the SD card slot is on the front. It's enclosed, it's safe, it doesn't look like it's put together from sort of DIY 3D printed parts. It looks and feels well made, so top marks there. Unfortunately, first impressions on the software side of things were not so great. There was supposed to be an SD card included with some test prints and software, but that wasn't in our package, so I went off in search of download links. Meanwhile, I scanned the QR code uh, provided in the manual, which led me to something saying the app wasn't available in my region, so I had to manually search for the app instead after figuring out what it was called. Then I found out that the Wi-Fi in this doesn't support 5G networks, so I had to create a new 2.4 gigahertz network just for this. Thankfully, that did connect eventually. I upgraded the firmware and we were off printing. But I'm not confident that someone less technically minded would have got there. The app is also quite annoying because it's gamified and it won't shut up about giving you Kuva coins, which are so utterly pointless, I don't know what they were thinking there as well as actual phone notifications that you'll get about random blog posts. I was also informed of a firmware update, which turned out to not be relevant to this model at all. Mixed in with all of that are useful notifications like your print has finished. But it's a really bizarre direction that they've taken with the app notifications, which could have been useful, but are unfortunately so full of noise, you're probably just going to turn them off. The app I found can also be unresponsive and buggy, so I would try tapping on something twice and it would end up loading the page twice and refreshing constantly. It was a little bit annoying. The actual printing aspect of the app works really well, and it's very convenient. You can grab a model directly from the Creality library, then slice and print it all from within the app. It's very cool, but there's so much other nonsense on there that it's just too cluttered. So I really feel like there's a lot of work needed there, or just the ability to disable most of it. Next up, I wanted to try slicing from my Mac. The first download link I found on the Creality website refused to run at all. It just opened and crashed again. Maybe not compatible with M1 Macs, who knows. After contacting support, they did however manage to send me a Google Drive link with the contents of what would have been on the included SD card. And that had a working copy of Creality Slicer, albeit a slightly older version. And it turns out the Creality Slicer is just a customized version of Cura, so that's good. Still, it would be nice if they could just provide a profile download and the instructions to add it to a vanilla copy of Cura. If you do, however, use their custom version, you have the option to upload to Creality Cloud. So you have a certain amount of free storage in which you can store your slices. And you just hit upload to cloud button instead of save to disk, and then it goes onto your account. However, you still have to choose to print that file uh, either from the cloud website or from your phone. It doesn't actually get sent directly to the printer, which I think would have been a lot simpler to understand. Perhaps they're trying to drum up business for their cloud storage, who knows. These cloud printing and app features are still far superior to every other 3D printer that I have ever used, even those much higher than this price point. Even a DIY Raspberry Pi solution isn't this good. Normally, you'd be paying a lot more for cloud printing support, or as I say, DIYing it. And while it's not a huge deal to take out the SD card, if you're old school like that, I have quickly got accustomed to the cloud printing aspect and very much appreciate the simplicity of it. Okay, so on to print quality. First up, I did a couple of pre-sliced test files. Uh, a dinosaur and a whistle. These were the G-code files that they supplied to test the printer. And while not exactly perfect on the underside, uh, the rest is really good. It's good quality, nothing much to say there. 
I also tried a compact version of this all-in-one overhang and bridging stringing test etc and you can see from the results a pretty excellent overall there's a little bit of stringing but overall it's very impressive good levels of detail good bridging ability and again this was straight out of the box once I'd obtained the SD cards contents that is I also went bigger and did a high resolution 23 hour long baby Groot planter print unfortunately it might have printed a little too fast and knocked off one of the arms overnight though I was able to glue it back on and patch up the holes so after briefly filming this b-roll I painted it up some people prefer to print this sort of thing in wood PLA which is plastic imbued with actual wood filaments but those kinds of things can really tax your hot end and scrape through it and you'll need to replace it soon enough I don't really see the point of doing that when you can do a quick 10 minute paint job and get just as good if not better effect as well as being able to cover up any printing errors so this pretty awesome lastly I had a go at changing out the filament and swapped over to some silk rainbow and did this uh, vase unfortunately the overhang on the bottom was not so great could have done with a bit slower printing there I think but again overall I think it's fantastic quality to get something out of the box now of course there are things that you can tweak but in order to test a printer I generally don't change the settings at all I just use the profiles provided in the software just as any beginner would my wife also requested an avocado boat which is what it's printing at the moment hopefully I'll have some b-roll of that to show you by the time I get around to editing this so what's the verdict should you buy the Sir Moon V1 Pro is this the right printer for you specifically as a beginner overall the quality is great especially considering that it can do that out of the box it's not perfect however you do have a very solid foundation from which you can tweak and learn which is very much appreciated for many beginners they can end up being frustrated at the very first step and wonder are they doing something wrong or is the printer just bad and doesn't work and in this case it'll print and if there is something wrong they can investigate well this bit isn't perfect and then look up what can I do to change to get that better 3d printing is a learning experience and a reliable 3d printer helps you on your journey no end because it means that the problem will be with you the software setup is not as smooth as I'd like on the computer side anyway the smartphone app basically worked out of the box and I suspect many beginners will be happy starting there with cloud slicing and the included app library of models though I did find the UI cluttered with unnecessary features an attempt at what I presume is building a community but I'm really nitpicking here because the tools offered are as I say far superior to every other 3d printer I've ever tested others simply don't have smartphone apps or cloud printing especially at this price point and with a bit of refinement and smoothing of the user flow I think this sort of feature could really set the bar for all 3d printer manufacturers moving forward so the Sir Moon V1 Pro is a great desktop printer it is very beginner friendly and it gets very good results albeit with a fairly small print bed this is about the largest height you're going to get out of it and there are also some aspects that may frustrate experienced users here Creality has managed to bring features from far more expensive printers down to a consumer level and I dare say this is the new bar to beat for beginner friendly printers I would very much recommend it and it's definitely one that I'll be keeping in the workshop which you know is the highest praise I can give to any device okay thanks for watching and I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button down there to tell YouTube yet yeah, this video is what I was looking for when I was looking for a review of this printer and be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all our latest reviews and giveaways until next time I've been James Bruce with MUO reviews <laughs>